19-year-old Kerry Singleton is an up-and-coming artist from Blackpool. Young, talented and ambitious, Kerry appears to have it all. But Kerry has an embarrassing secret. For the last 15 years, her diet has consisted almost entirely of meat and potatoes. Kerry's food problems don't end there. The reason her diet is limited is because she's absolutely petrified of fruit and veg. It's OK. <laughs> Anything healthy and it's right now. Oh, I can't even get it close to my mouth. Unless Kerry changes her ways, she faces serious health problems. Getting her to beat her addictions will be the job of clinical psychologist Stephen Briars and nutritionist Natalie Savona. <laughs> While Natalie tries to persuade Kerry not to be such a wet lettuce, <laughs> Stephen will try to show her that this is one fight she can win. Let it know what you feel about <laughs> selfish people. But will they be able to reverse 19 years of bad eating in just four weeks? <laughs> Singleton will soon be fleeing the nest and leaving her hometown of Blackpool for a new life at Cardiff University. She'll be studying fine art, but her diet is far from a pretty picture. Her picky palate means mealtimes always bring the same two tired old ingredients. I've had this meat and potato thing for so long that I just, I know what I'm going to have probably that morning. It's just so boring. <laughs> Kerry dreams of expanding her diet. I would love to be able to eat a salad. You know, I'd love to be able to just eat something quite fresh. But all her attempts to eat vegetables or fruit end in tears. I just don't want to touch them. I don't want to touch them because I think they look squishy. Anything that's grown from the ground or from a tree, she, she pushes away. When I first met her, I thought that she must be making that up. But I realised that it is true. She has actually got some sort of mental block. No, it's just so juicy. It's horrible. Let's see why you go again. I think she wants to try it. She can't get herself that last step to actually put it in her mouth and eat it. <laughs> that was like the tiniest bit ever. I couldn't really. Oh. I think it's very important for Kerry to sort it out now before she goes to uni. Because I think she's so excited and so looking forward to uni, then she shouldn't be worrying about her food. The only things Kerry can stomach to supplement her diet are full of sugar and fat. She starts her day with two sugar-filled glasses of fizzy pop and gets through four packets of crisps and four chocolate bars before she goes to bed. Because I don't eat, like, healthy foods, I think people probably think I'm a bit grubby, you know, quite, and, oh, how could you eat all that, you know? It's a bit gross, really. But thankfully, I don't have the added weight issue, which is a lot of it. I don't have that issue. But, like, a lot of it, like, I think, oh, my God, you know, it's so dangerous, I'm going to get heart disease when I'm, like, 30 or something. What I'm worried about, personally, is diabetes that a lot of young people are getting nowadays. And... She needs to try and stave that off. Kerry recently split up with her boyfriend. With her new life at university just round the corner, it's the perfect time to sort out her eating problem. Everything about me wants to change this so much. It really does. It would be brilliant just to like, just not have to think about it and be able to go wherever I want and not worry about what sort of food's going to be there or what other people are eating around me and things. It would be brilliant. Over the next four weeks, Kerry will work with the experts to try and conquer her fear of healthy foods.
It's day one and Kerry has been called to London for her first meeting with the experts. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Nice, nice to meet you. Meet you. Hi. 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 Sorry, I saw you in the right. then. Hi, Kerry. Hello. Good nice to meet you. you. You're right. Again. I'm OK, thank you. I'm oh, all right. You're clutching your tummy. Are you feeling nervous? Yes. <laughs> very. Uh, I, yes, very nervous. Yeah. Natalie and Stephen have a surprise in store for Kerry, which they hope will get her into the right frame of mind before the hard work begins. All right, Kerry, now you've got quite a journey ahead of you over the next few weeks, and in order to try and keep your motivation levels high and keep you focused, uh, we've got something we want to show you now, all right? OK. All right. Hey, sweetheart, it's your dad here. <laughs> Just to tell you that we're <laughs> thinking of you. It's going to be tough this next couple of weeks, but don't worry, we'll be here for you if you need us. At the end of the day, Kerry, um, all we want is for you to be happy. You're so beautiful and you're so bright, yeah? And to do this would make you complete. We don't ever want to lose you as a friend, Carrie, and we, we know that it, this could escalate and we don't want it to get to the point where it's damaging your health and, and well, worse, really. I'm not going to obviously go into it. I know I've joked about with you about, about everything and things and uh, laughed at you quite a few times, but... I wouldn't want you to miss the opportunity to um, like, sort yourself out and it's pretty much your last chance to change. If you end up going to uni, it's going to be, there's going to be no support particularly for you to change there. I do think, Kerry, as you get older, this problem will become worse with, in social situations and it could become more embarrassing. I just hope we can get this sorted out. I do feel that I failed you as a mum somehow but you've just got to think of the long picture just think that you get this done now and it'll be fabulous and we love you lots okay. so quite a range of emotions there was there anything in there that anybody said that will keep you going do you think over the next few weeks i mean what what my mum said about being a failure as a mum <laughs> Mm. Um, that especially, um, like it's quite nice to have the support that, that I know that even though they might not understand it, that they're there. Okay. Shall we get out of here? Yes. Yeah, come on then. In case Kerry was in any doubt after hearing from her loved ones, Natalie and Stephen have one last nutritional wake-up call for her to try and digest. Thank you. Good. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a weird dream. A good dream or a bad dream? A good dream. What we want to do is really have a look at what it is you're putting into your body. OK. Can we have some service, please? Do you want to eat that? <laughs> you do. <laughs> what is it? It's animal fat. So you're having all your snacks, but you're also eating a lot of quite fatty meat. Yeah, it is. Service, please. Oh, God. If that's swear down, if that goes all the way down the table. You look a bit freaked out. Before us is your body weight, eight stone in fat. And that's how much you're eating in the course of a year. And the really bad bit of that is mm -hmm. that it's twice as much as you should be. Mm. Jeez. See, I want to cry now, but I cry everything, so I'm going to stop yeah. myself. <laughs> See, I'm going to cry. What are you upset about? Just panic. Panic. It's OK. So what is the panic? <laughs> Just panic that, God, what's going to happen eventually? I'm going to somehow have a heart attack one day and just not, you know, recover or something. We've got four weeks to work with you. Yeah. yeah? What do you think would be something that would be worth striving for? Just being able to cook a meal, really, that involves foods that I've never really liked touched or cooked with before. All right, is there anything else that you think your family would be surprised if you achieved? 
Oh, yes, uh, my dad, he bet me that he'd, he'd give me £50 if I ate a banana at the end of this. If I could get that off him, I would be absolutely amazed, absolutely amazed. <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of people would have been shocked at our sort of banquet of lard. But what really interested me was the way that she went from um, laughter to floods of tears very quickly, almost as if she was overwhelmed by what she was feeling. I want to explore further the possible connection between Kerry's food problems and her capacity to manage, or perhaps not to manage, her emotions. Kerry's fussy eating has been a problem since infancy. She used to have a problem with lumps. Like yoghurts, we used to have to buy smooth yoghurts with nothing, no lumps in them, otherwise she wouldn't eat them. Like if, if we was having, I can't think of a meal now, but like a roast dinner, then she would just have the meat, the potatoes, the mash or whatever, and she just wouldn't have the veg. If we were having another meal that had salad, she just wouldn't have the salad. Although they knew she wasn't eating the right food, her parents didn't want to make a fuss. Why she's like that, I've no idea, not a clue. We've never been the type of parents who make it a big thing in her life. It could take over if you're not careful, so you just make her what she likes. And it's just, we've just carried on like that, really. Never really knowing how bad it, a phobia was about the salad and the fruit. Kerry realised early on that her problem was something way beyond just fussy eating. Well, my dad had similar things when he was younger, and he says, oh, yeah, you'll, you know, you'll just grow out of it. Like, and my grandma says, oh, you'll grow out of it. And, um, but I know my reaction, my reactions, to think like things on the table, like little bits on the table, I think that's not normal. That's not gonna that's not gonna go away quite easily. To begin the task of tackling Kerry's eating difficulties, Natalie needs to try and see the extent of Kerry's phobia. I need to find out from Kerry where she will go with her food, what she really will eat and what she won't eat. And then on the back of that, I need to look at where I can take her because the aim of this is to get her beyond her current limitations. But how we do that at the moment is an unknown and I need to know where I can go with her today. At the moment, I know that that is the disgusting yes. junk that you are living off. Yeah, loads of fat, loads of sugar. Mm -hmm. loads of rubbish yeah. and you're missing out on all of this sort of stuff so i reckon we need to get going and find out where i can push you to yeah <laughs> get that plate and put it in front of you you look like i'm asking you to pick up dog <laughs> shit <laughs> hold it in your hand <laughs> hold out your hand <laughs> I didn't like it. the seagull sound in me, I will scream like a seagull. Oh, it's just wet. Ah! <laughs> I will run away, I will run away. Hold out your hand. Wrap your fingers around it. <laughs> oh, so horrible. <laughs> Put that in your mouth. Honestly. Spit it out if you need to. Ah. <laughs> but Kerry's ordeal doesn't end there. Over the next hour, Natalie tries to get her to hold down a few more of her forbidden fruits. I can't bite into that. I can't. Oh. It's slimy. How about you put that in your mouth and you don't bite into it? In, 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 in. <coughs> in your hand, go. One, two, three, go. <coughs> with Carrie terrified at even the sight of healthy fruit and veg, Natalie comes up with a plan to try and get her to keep something down. Right. What I want to do is take away one of your senses that I think gets in the way of you trying certain foods. I would like you, if it's not too weird... This is weird, my worst nightmare. ...is to put that on. OK. 
What is it? Is it I think it's a sweet. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> oh yeah, well we know you like sweets. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you something now that has the same flavour. Okay. But is natural. That's okay. It's cold. Oh. That was okay. Do you know what that was? No. No idea. Is it a strawberry? Is it strawberry? Mm. Is it a strawberry? <laughs> no. <laughs> you just ate a strawberry. Oh, I ate a strawberry. Just thinking about using the blindfold. Yeah. What do you think? You know, tell, tell me what you think about it's having... looking at it completely. I'm certainly able to put it in my mouth now by not looking at it. Do you know, because... Oh, I was all slurring because I can't believe it. My mind... <laughs> You're drunk on success. <laughs> yeah. You're on your way. Okay. Nice Kerry really understood that taking away one of her senses, i.e. her sight, made a huge difference. I wasn't sure how much difference it would make because I know she's afraid of the sort of texture, the wetness of fruits. The main thing is we can see that there's a potential for progress, but there's still quite a long way to go before she's sitting having a fruit salad. Five hours later and Kerry arrives back home in Blackpool. Well, I'm just about to go to bed. Um, oh, I can't believe about to I'm absolutely excited. I can't believe I even managed. I'm absolutely exhausted, but I can't believe I actually managed to put something in my mouth and not gag on it. It's absolutely amazing. But now I'm going to go to bed because I'm absolutely knackered. Nighty night. <laughs> To help Kerry begin to get her diet back on track, Natalie has given her a hamper full of healthy homework tasks. Kerry, I want you to clear the kitchen cupboards of all the chocolate bars and crisps and replace them with cereal bars, nuts and dried fruit. This will give you some good fats and protein and keep your energy levels more stable. Right, in we go. I'm well up for getting rid of them and everything, but I'm going to have a serious sugar crash. Right. I know. I have three. I can keep three. I'm going to try an apricot. I'm going to go for it. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I've eaten one. Rock on. Today, Kerry has her first session with clinical psychologist Stephen Briars. It's his chance to probe the issues behind her food phobia. Do you want to tell me, first of all, what your understanding of where your eating problems have come from? As f I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure I've had it most, like, all my life. Um, I can't remember really any specific, you know, event of where this, where it just, like, I was trauma... Not, I don't know, like, traumatised of it or something. What other situations make you anxious? I would say new situations quite easily. I get quite nervous and feel a bit sick. Every night before something normally happens, I normally have a big, like, uh, emotional, like, because I can't find something, or I can't find a shoe, or I can't find... I mean, before I even started this, like, I had a panic attack because I couldn't, if I, I couldn't find my phone charger. I just went round my house going, uh, like that, for, like, an hour. I do get quite worked up sometimes and it does like I'm quite angry when I get going I can't vent it in any way like it's just there so it's something about not being able to cope isn't it yeah some part of you believes that you're going to 
come to pieces. Yeah. Is it the same kind of anxiety that you'd get in relation to trying some new food for the first time? Yeah, I would, I would say that. Okay. I wonder sort of, you know, whether you've almost created a language with your food between sort of, you know, safe food mm. that, you know, can be relied upon, is, is dependable, mm. and then these kind of, you know, these unsafe, unfamiliar foods, which you at the moment believe, I cannot, I cannot cope yeah. with these foods. Yeah. And I'm at the mercy of very strong feelings. Yeah, that's, that is a lot like what it is like. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to cry again. <laughs> it's OK. That part of you that feels like this is not very far below no, the surface. It's not. So if if these unsafe foods have come to symbolise a, a gateway into this this part of yourself, mm. you know, I can understand why it feels at the moment that they have to be, you know, kept away from. Because the flip side of this is, well, if I do stick with the foods that I know, mm -hmm. then I am less likely to yeah. end up in this very vulnerable, exposed yeah, state. Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly how it is. That's exactly it. There doesn't seem to have been a particular incident that triggered Kerry's food phobias, but her problems have been around since she was a child. My challenge is going to be to teach Kerry how to manage her own feelings without becoming overwhelmed. Feeling relieved, actually, and quite... Like I've got things off my chest quite a lot. I feel actually quite positive now that, that it's like there's the reason for how I do what I do and how I feel and things. I feel really positive that I can actually change it and that I'm going to help not just one area but how I deal with situations as well. look healthy but Natalie's worried about the impact her high sugar diet has had on her insides with diabetes a particular concern so following a blood test she's asked Kerry to come to Harley Street in London to get the results Dr Pixie McKenna is a GP with a special interest in eating problems she's analyzed Kerry's blood tests and today will reveal the findings first she gives Kerry a physical examination can I just get you to open up your mouth big and wide? Stick your tongue out. Okay, that's perfect. All right. The reason I was looking in your mouth, it's, it's one indicator of telling your general health, mm. actually. And what I couldn't help noticing is that it looks like you probably have some yeast sitting on the top of your, your tongue, mm. um, which is quite a, you know, it's quite a common thing, babies get it. Yeah. It's also seen in people who um, have signs of diabetes in their blood and when we went on to test your bloods what we found is that you had a high level of sugar in your blood yeah. when we checked it okay mm -hmm. so what that means is that the sugar that you're taking into your blood in the form of your diet mm -hmm. isn't being broken down I mean I think look no doctor would tell you oh you've got a high blood sugar you're diabetic straight mm. away. Okay, that's not that's not how we would diagnose diabetes, but yeah. you certainly need to have further tests. To help Kerry understand more about diabetes, Dr. Pixie has prepared an experiment. This represents the sugar in your bloodstream, okay? okay? And this blue liquid here represents insulin. What insulin does is it causes sugar to be absorbed from the bloodstream. And that's why insulin is absolutely essential for life, because you need that sugar to survive. Kerry pours the liquid representing inefficient insulin into the sugar sample. Mix the chemical reaction. Just like in a diabetic, the poor quality insulin can't dissolve all the sugar into the bloodstream, which can result in damage to the kidneys and blood vessels. We're just stirring it till it goes. Wow, you might be there a while. <laughs> oh, will I? I think you might as well give that up because you're not going to get that sugar to disappear. Good effort. <laughs> Thank you. This is what happens in people who have diabetes. They either don't have any insulin or the insulin that they have is ineffective. Mm -hmm. OK. My concern for you is that rather than this situation, yeah. that actually this is the situation that's going on. I'm not worried. Mm. Worried's an understatement. <laughs> worried. Um, mm. But th 
Now listen, you've got symptoms. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> what we need to do is we just need to do some more tests mm. and we really, really, really need to attack that diet. What those results are saying is there's no choice now. You really have to make a difference. You have to change your diet. It's all down to her. No one else can do it for her. And if she doesn't, then she really is in trouble. Hearing that she might be diabetic has been a real shock for Kerry. I was absolutely devastated to hear that I might be diabetic. Couldn't believe it. It's a week since Kerry made her commitment to change and the experts meet up to discuss her progress. How did she get on in the kitchen day? Well, overall, I think Kerry had a really great day in the kitchen. We had real success once I blindfolded her and got her to try various fruits. And it seemed that taking away that major sense of looking at things seemed to help. One thing that's clear out of my time in the kitchen with Kerry is really quite significant anxiety that comes up around her food. It builds and builds and builds the more she thinks about things. So do you think that's something that you can take on to work with? I mean, absolutely. I, Kerry is somebody who's really charming, but she is very up and down, and she's very much kind of at the mercy of her feelings at the moment. I think what she needs to learn is that actually she can rein back that level of anxiety um, and I think she needs some self-soothing techniques so that actually she can take back some control when she's in that really kind of uh, anxious state and I think I've got some idea of how we might be able to do that. Determined to give Kerry the best possible chance of success, Stephen heads north to Blackpool. What I know about Kerry is that she's someone who has real problems in sort of coping with anxious feelings. That might be to do with factors in the environment when she was growing up. It might be something to do with her temperament. So what I'm hoping to do today is expose her to a certain level of anxiety, teach her some techniques for keeping that under control in the hope that she can then apply that over to her eating. How are you doing? Stephen's asked Kerry to meet him at the zoo, where he's lined up an exercise sure to give her the creeps. Initial reactions? <laughs> mm. Yeah? Mm. You might quite rightly be thinking, you know, yeah, but my main issue is <laughs> certain kinds of food. Well, the connection is that I'm hoping that if we can build up um, a series of progressively stressful events, I'm going to be able to teach you some techniques to manage those, all right? Yeah. I mean, I feel like quite like <gasps> already now. Yeah. Like... Try and relax your body so that you're giving your brain the yeah. message that this is safe. Focus in on mm. keeping your breathing sort of smooth, yeah, in and out. One, two, three, four, five, and <sighs> breathe out. <sighs> okay, all right. Okay, Kerry, so here's our our selection of, of dead things. Let's start off then with something sort of fairly, um, fairly harmless. To gradually build up her anxiety levels, Stephen okay. starts by getting Kerry to pick up a dead praying mantis. What are you focusing on? It's the legs. It's, it's just because they're so small that they might run, run and I won't be able to catch it. If it did, all right, what yeah. would happen? I'd, I'd absolutely have a hissy fit. I'd, scream and jump up and down and yeah. that's exactly what you do when you approach some of your foods that expectation in itself primes Probably. you to have a fear Does response because you're expecting in trouble all right so next up is our dead tarantula what could you tell yourself to that would to some degree reassure you or make you feel a little bit more okay that it, keep talking to me. Yeah, keep yeah, talking. yeah. It's, don't um, let it. Don't let it. No, no, it's you. fine. It's yeah. it's How fuzzy. It? It's yeah. fine. It's, it's dead. Fine. It's very dead. With Kerry mastering dead insects, Stephen takes her to the next level as the creatures come to life. Are you in a sort of fairly calm state at the moment? Uh, 
give me a give me a reading. Yeah, I probably need to breathe scale. a bit before. Yeah, just that's uh, fine. just my hands okay. are a bit. And just focus yeah. on your breathing. Okay. And I imagine mm. that she will sort of settle. What's that like? What's the actual experience like? Fine. Fine. It's really good. So, here we have the last part of the challenge. The Madagascan hissing cockroach. Ah! Now, these are likely to be a problem for you, aren't they? Because they're a bit more spider-like in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Again, put yourself into that relaxed state. Yeah, close your eyes. Get the tension out of your body. Yeah. All right? And I want you to sort of do this in the sense that this is not a big deal. Yes. All right? Okay. It's not, it's not though, is it? It's, it's not. Like... No, it really isn't. It's not going to jump up and get me. It's only a cockroach. It's, it's not going to. It's not going to. It's it's not big. It's not scary. Okay. How anxious is this making you feel at the moment? Not that actually. Not cool. that anxious. All cool. right. Okay. Good. Enjoying it. Enjoying actually, it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I think you've done amazingly well today. And one of the things that's changing is your expectation about how, A, yeah. how you will react, and B, how hard it will be. Yeah. And that combination of changing those two things is actually making this experience less stressy yeah. for you than it could otherwise be. I can't believe I even touched a cockroach. I would never in a million years have picked up one of those. In a million years. It proper showed me how to deal with my anxiety and how to just how to relax and breathe well chopped can't believe it while Kerry has overcome her fears at the zoo Natalie has a shock in store for her parents. Hi there, Hello. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Helen. Helen. And Helen. Oh, it's Colin. Hi, Helen. Good and that's to meet you. All right. Yes, thank you. Now, what I'd like you to do is take on eating and drinking like Kerry does for three whole days. So no fruit, no veg, no salad. You're looking really worried. <laughs> I would be worried if I were you. Yeah. The thing is, I want you to realise that I'm asking you to do this obviously for a reason. Yeah. You will actually see on a tiny level how she might be feeling day to day. Mm. Will you take it on? <laughs> yeah. 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 I think we need to really, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah. And that, yeah, mm. yeah. Okay. Not happy, but we'll do it. Two days in, and they've already had their fill of Kerry's diet. How are you managing with it? Yes. <clears throat> I'm bloated. Are you bloated? What, yeah. With the pop? It's not just the pop, it's all the crisps and the chocolate and, mm. and that. No fruit. I just feel full. Feel full all the time? Mm. And that. The fizzy pop for me, I don't like it, I have to say. You can see what our oh, Kerry's missing. Not many plus sides, to be honest. <laughs> Having learned vital techniques from Stephen on overcoming anxiety, Kerry wants to try applying them to her food problem whilst attempting Natalie's next task, to eat a fruit salad. Right, let's try this one. I don't know what that is. <coughs> oh, there we go. It's me saying that I'm going to be sick, though. I can, I, I can feel it. In my head, I'm going, oh, I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick in a minute. Right. Let's try a bit of pineapple. This looks a bit funkier. Mmm. <laughs> I really like that. I just feel like that. <sighs> oh, my God, oh, my God. Pepped up, anxious emotional bit of me is kind of starting to go now. I mean, it's still there with certain things, but like, it's, I can manage it more now. Even her friends are picking up on the new, calmer Kerry. 
I've noticed differences in you. Have you? Yeah. Like what? Like, um, you go and do like a bit of a stressful time, but you're yeah. taking it all really calmly. Last night, I had, honestly, I couldn't find the shoes that I wanted. And I, I told myself, just wear a pair of normal shoes and you'll be fine. And I wore, I thought I would just wore some shoes and was not bothered and had a brilliant night. And then this morning, I had to ring like student finance, had to ring a council, then I had to ring uni, then I had to ring the carer. The old carer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be like, oh my God, oh my God. And you'd be like screaming and everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With her final challenge looming, Kerry has made good progress. But with just a handful of fruits conquered, she still has a long way to go. Today, Natalie has a plan to change that. I have brought Kerry to Borough Market for two main reasons. One is to get her excited about food, have some passion about it. But before she gets excited about food, she has to know what it is. And I think she's pretty clueless. Kerry. What the... What the hell are they? Do you have you know, no idea what that is? I haven't a, I haven't, I, I you, haven't a clue what's alien. This, Kerry, is a beautiful, fresh, look at that, ripe fig. Fig? Yeah. God. You try it? Yeah, I'll try it. Yeah. It's a fruit, so it's sweet and... Yeah, I'll give it a go. Go on. It's all right, it's not bad, it's not bad. Do you know what I actually thought a fig was? I'm going to absolutely embarrass myself. So I thought it was a nut. I thought a fig was a nut. <laughs> Kerry, don't tell us things like that. I know. With absolutely no idea about fresh produce, Natalie tries to get Kerry's taste buds tingling. Kiwi fruit? That's no help. <laughs> Artichokes. Do you even what? know what it is, if it's a fruit or a vegetable? I'm assuming it's a... Oh no, I want to say vegetable, but I don't think it is, I actually think it's fruit. That is an artichoke. Admittedly, it's quite a weird vegetable. Kerry may be slowly expanding her knowledge, but next up, Natalie wants her to attempt her first vegetable. Well, they're peas, aren't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever eaten peas straight out of the pod? Never. I've never even eaten peas. Press your thumb there. Oh. Nice. Go on, eat the rest. One, two, three, go. go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting out of the way. You're right. Gagging quite happily, but I'm all right. <laughs> so what, what was different there? What happened? Just because they are all at once. A bit too much for me, do you like all? If I feel there's too much in my head and something just seems to happen, well... Should we just cut your head off? <laughs> that would be a lot easier. Yeah, you won't have to think about it. I think it would be really unrealistic of me to think that I could get Kerry, age 19, used to eating complete crap, really passionate about food and different things like that. But what I'd like to do is see someone who's actually really quite keen to be cooking her own meals as a student. That in itself would be a huge achievement. Now, I've got a bunch of something for you. Isn't... I know what it's broccoli, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. I was like, so mad at myself and that. I'm sure I know what it is. So that's a present for you. Oh, thank you very much. That's about a portion. One for you to try. Thank you. Oh, aren't I sweet? Yes. <laughs> If Kerry could ditch her favourite chocolate bar, and that's 29 grams of fat, and replace it with a healthy spear of broccoli, she'd be stocking up on calcium, which builds bone and teeth, chromium, which helps regulate blood sugar, and an A vitamin called lutein, shown to help maintain healthy eyesight. Back in Blackpool, Kerry's quick to put together a meal featuring Natalie's green gift. I'm making gammon, broccoli, and new potatoes. I'm assuming that's the bit you eat. <laughs> I haven't the foggiest. How do you even know it's cooked? Sod it, I'll try it this way. It's the first time a vegetable other than a potato has ever featured in one of Kerry's meals. That 
have witnessed me eating my first piece of broccoli. <laughs> right, off we go. Really nice. Still on a high from her success with the broccoli, Kerry's raising the stakes. I ate all of them, yeah. <laughs> Her dad's bet her £50 she won't be able to eat a banana as part of her final challenge. So she gives her brother a visit, clasping her number one enemy. Ow! I just want you to put a bit of banana in my hand first. Wait a sec, I'm gonna... Mm, I'm gonna do Stephen. Give me your hand, come on. Really. No, sorry. Just hold your nose and think <sighs> of <sighs> some chips. Oh, it just smells. It stinks. You can't give up now. You've no, got a no, banana, no, no, it. I hate them. I you've come just... to my flat with some bananas. <laughs> You're going to eat one of them. This time, try not throwing it. <laughs> well, it's not that bad. It's gross. It's all right, it's all right, Kerry. No, it's not, I hate it. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so you won't be taking these with you then? No. No? Put me in the fridge If she thinks she's going to eat a banana, we need some pretty good psychologists on her to try and get her to eat them because people telling her to eat them isn't going to work. You probably best just lockering her in a room with bananas and not letting her out until she's eating one or something, but I don't personally think she'll do it. Despite her banana setback, Stephen and Natalie have a little more faith in Kerry than her brother, and they meet up to discuss a way forward. I think it's still early days for Kerry to actually get passionate about food, but she's doing really, really well. She's trying more things, but she still gets completely overwhelmed. And I think, well, we're certainly not home and dry yet. Yeah, I mean, I do agree with you. I mean, she did so well at the zoo. I think, however, I do still need to do more work on the way she regulates her emotions because she's got to stop being overwhelmed by these states of feeling and breaking down at the drop of a hat. So that's really my next port of call. In London, Stephen has come up with an exercise to get Kerry to come out fighting. Right, so... <laughs> oh, my God. Having given her techniques to control anxiety through relaxation and breathing, Stephen wants to address Kerry's tendency to become overwhelmed in stressful situations, like trying unfamiliar foods. I think that, to some extent, it's still quite hard for you to deal with certain emotions. Mm. They still tend to spill out in a fairly uncontrolled oh, yeah. way. Yeah. All right? I want to think about how you can actually confront certain emotions directly mm -hmm in order that you can then find maybe more productive ways to deal with it and manage it and channel it yeah. into something a bit more purposeful. Yeah. So to begin with, rather cruelly, okay. <laughs> I, need to, I need to kind of get you into a state where you're feeling that emotion for real. Let's nominate Before he can help her, first. Stephen must demonstrate to Kerry how currently she lets her emotions control her. To do this, he oh needs God. to draw on some unpleasant past experiences. Tell me about a time when you've been exposed to someone who's been behaving in a really selfish way. My ex-boyfriend's sister. God, she's only nine, but my God, that girl. We were sat in a car on the way to France and I was freezing, but she had to have the window down. My mum might give her a blanket and she wouldn't give me one. I'm thinking, oh my God. If you could have shouted what you wanted, what you were feeling inside at that yeah. point, what would you have shouted? I just went, yeah, you know, just give me a fucking blanket for crying out okay. loud. Right. Now that's not a shout. So, Don't worry about sort of, you know, how it's going to come across. It's a difficult thing to do. But, you know, if you want to shout, yeah. give me the fucking blanket, then you do it, all right, like that. Oh, okay. okay. So, put some sound around that feeling. I know, but I'm starting to get really upset. <laughs> exactly. I know you are, all right? But I want you to try and hold it, OK? Take it out on this yeah. thing, all right? And let it know what you feel about selfish people who do what they want. Do you <laughs> Yeah, keep going. Absolute fuck! 
Keep going, oh, keep going, keep going, keep going, all right? More oh. and more, all right? And now let's have the sound. What does it make it's... you feel? Ah! Oh, my God! Oh. <laughs> Straight on. Ah! Keep it's going, keep ah! going, keep going, keep going. Sustain it, come on. Come on, you can do better than that. <laughs> come on, more, more, OK? Put the sound back. Ah! OK, all right. Having encouraged Kerry to release her emotions, Stephen now wants to show her some techniques to channel them in a more constructive way. You look to me like you were feeling quite out of control at times. But the way forward with this is to find a way of dealing with your emotions that doesn't involve either feeling completely freaked out by them or feeling out of control when you do so. And this is why we've brought you to a boxing ring. All right, because there are principles in the sport of boxing which is not about uncontrolled aggression, <laughs> but on the contrary, it's all about learning to exercise mastery over what you feel and channel it in a purposeful way. Stephen's no boxer himself, so he's enlisted the help of the club's top coach. When I saw her on the bags, she was actually more... That wasn't controlled aggression, basically. It's just, you're just hitting out. You always hit? Yeah, yeah like... Boxing is the art of channeling aggression into accurate punches. By focusing on the target, Kerry can release her emotion without exploding into tears. So what you're actually doing is controlling it now. Yeah. Okay, and hook. Well done. That one, two, it's not long before two, Kerry's three, wild flailing three, has been replaced four, by five, accurate jabs. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Back on the bag, Stephen needs to expose her extreme emotions again. Feel that anger starting to really build up inside you. But will they beat her once more? Five, four, three, two, one, and give it. More. <laughs> I hope that today has kind of given you some sense that mm. it's OK to get angry. And, yeah. and, and th you know, there's the beginning of that sense that this is something that you could channel rather mm. than something that's going to overwhelm you. Yeah. I do think it'll help. I do think it'll help my fear phobia in the sense that I'm not as scared anymore in that I'm getting more confident as I go along. And this has helped me even more to become even more confident. Do you know that, that it, I did have a problem and that I'm now sorting it? The big meal is just round the corner, but the family's thoughts are elsewhere. One week ago, Kerry discovered that she might have diabetes, and it's now time to get her latest test results. A bit apprehensive. Quite nervous about bit it, nervous really. About it, yeah. um, with regards to what they're going to say and the implications for Kerry, really. Natalie's travelled up from London to break the news. Right, so you know why I'm here? I've got some blood test results. And to put you out of your misery, the good news is you do not have diabetes. <gasps> oh, oh, thank God for that. Oh. Well, that's, that's good. Yeah. Oh. yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I'm pleased about that, really pleased. I was so pleased. setting myself up for the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. oh, thank God for that. You do have what's called glucose intolerance. OK. So right. what that means is that your body's not handling sugar well. Mm -hmm. The human body produces insulin to convert sugar into energy, but eating too much sugar can result in the body becoming resistant to insulin. When this happens, too much sugar remains in the bloodstream, a condition called glucose intolerance. In time, there's a danger that the extra sugar in the bloodstream will damage the kidneys and blood vessels, resulting in a condition known as type 2 diabetes. The thing is that for your age and for someone as slim as you, these results are quite surprising. Ideally, mm. you now pretty much go on a diet that an early stages diabetic person would okay. follow. In other right. words, sugar, zero. Mm. If you don't, then you're continually mm. increasing your risk of actually developing diabetes. Mm. Oh, I can't tell you how relieved I am. But still, even glucose intolerance is still quite serious. My percentage of converting to diabetes is 5% each year. Basically, I now have to have a low sugar diet. There's no question about it. 
So I pushed myself on get diabetes when I was like 25 or something ridiculous like that. It's the day before Kerry's final challenge when she'll have to face up to a meal that's completely foreign to her. I'm cooking Thai chicken with uh, pineapple and some stir-fried vegetables. I would never have thought a couple of weeks ago that I'd be coming to somewhere like this and buying vegetables and touching them as well. I'd never thought I'd touch them. And I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy now. <laughs> got my big, big meal tomorrow. Um, I'm not that nervous, but I've never been to a Thai restaurant in my life, let alone like to cook something Thai, honestly. In only two hours, Kerry will attempt to eat an exotic meal in front of her family, and for dessert, she'll face the dreaded banana and the chance to win £50 from her dad. I really hope it goes well today. Thanks. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't. Mm. And I think absolutely the key is in, in, you know, just maintaining a sort of easier, more low-key attitude mm. towards it. Enjoy today and make the mm. most of it. I'm excited. Sure. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie has arranged for Kerry to familiarise herself with today's dishes by helping out in the kitchen. A bit apprehensive of what uh, she's cooking and how she's going to do. If she actually just ate a banana after what she's been like all these years, I think I'll fall off my chair. Yeah. Is that all right? I really didn't think Kerry would get this far in such a short space of time, and she has. As for whether she'll get through a whole banana today, Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. I'm not sure. She is setting herself quite a difficult right. challenge today because she's decided, helpfully, to cook up a whole load of things that she hasn't actually tasted yet. It's always going to be quite pressurised eating in front of her folks, but I'm, I'm optimistic. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quite nervous. Yeah. So, Connor, you got your 50 quid on you to I part have. with? Yep, I have. Well, I think she's nearly ready for you, so mm -hmm. if you'd like to take your seat. For the challenge to be a success, Kerry's going to have to clear her plate, including the pineapple, monge, chew, corn, carrots and mushrooms that she's prepared. Right, so you just go for it. Talk about making you feel uncomfortable as gulping at you while you're eating. I know, I'm the last one. So just pretend nobody's here and it's just us. <laughs> oh! Do you enjoy that? <laughs> <laughs> you need to give yourself a <laughs> Kerry may have finished her vegetables, but what about the dreaded banana? There is one thing. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, yes. You got your money. Get it on the table, man. Got a little bit of help for you. Oh, with my strawberries. Strawberries there. See, I would never even touch this, let alone, like, got some on. <laughs> 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 oh dear. It's phasing me, it's making me want to be thinking about it. Yeah. Don't like chasing it. It's making my eyes water. <laughs> Do you know what? I think that's OK. I think it's all right. We all can't like every yeah. fruit, can we? No. Have a nice big strawberry. Oh, on, just I, on I have there the you go. Strawberry. That in itself is a miracle, exactly. isn't it? Yeah. I think she deserves all the money, really. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, oh, she wouldn't eat sweet. strawberries before we started, and now she's yeah. eating bananas as well. Mm. Bummer, really, because I can't chuck it, so. <gasps> <laughs> I've got so much more self-belief. I do feel like nerves still, but they're not nerves that stop me doing things. I never thought it'd be easy for her, and, and I'm totally gobsmacked out. 
how far she's come, to be honest. I've enjoyed working with her enormously, and um, you know, and I very much hope she has a great time at university, and uh, and that you know this experience has set her up, you know, well at this time of change, you know, for what comes afterwards. So yeah, I really hope she does well. One month on, and Kerry started university. But has her old diet been laid to rest? In my fridge, I have. Apples. And oranges. Ham. Da, 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 da. Salad. And lots of it. My tongue is a lot better. I actually think it's the water and the veg um, and the fruit that I've been eating. Despite the new veg in her diet, she still indulges in some of her old pleasures. I should really have like a low sugar diet. Well, that's gone out the window. <laughs> I find if I'm on my own, I always say, oh, I'll just have some chocolate. It's bad, I know it is. I can't help it. Eating in public isn't the nightmare it once was for Kerry. Thank you. Never in a million years I thought I would have moved this far on. The experience was amazing. And it's helped me in general, not just with my food habits, which I'm so happy about. Because I used to, oh God, I used to be so anxious about things. I used to get stressed about little things. And do you know, that was, oh, it was, it's so, I'm so happy, so happy. Click on screen for more videos of extraordinary humans.